good, man. Good. I'm, I'm happy to have you on. I, I took some abuse on Twitter uh, over over some Jaden Ivey takes. <laughs> and I know that you're a guy that studies the game. You're, you you actually, you didn't abuse me because we're, we're boys, whatever you're saying. Like, we just share opinions. But people were using stuff you said again. <laughs> it was all bad, man. It wasn't all bad because, like, I, I, I love it anyway. It's, it's, you know, what did they say? Any publicity is good publicity? Yep. But, uh, you know what I'm saying? I, I'll take it. And I honestly, I still... Still kind of hold true to my opinion of, of you know, the stuff that I was saying, but obviously I, I, I respect your opinion and I like wanted to give, I guess I wanted to give you the opportunity to change my mind or like maybe educate me on like what I'm missing and Jaden Ivey specifically, but others as well. Cause I'm a big fan of Keegan Murray. Um, my boy Spinny here, he's a big fan of Shade and Sharp. I got into a little bit of Shade. It was hard to find like full game film of Shade and Sharp for a minute, but I found some AAU stuff, but uh, no, let's start with Jaden Ivey. And I want to say this easy. I, I'm, I put a lot of time in this. I put a lot of hours. I've been spending all morning watching film, but I don't think I know any more than anybody else. I'm not here to like question anybody else's thoughts. If you think Jay Nivey is a bad fit, that's fine. We're, we, we can disagree. We can still be boys and move on. Yeah. Like I may disagree with you. Like I think Jay Nivey can fit next to Cade Cunningham. And I think that's all I tried to express on Twitter, but I don't think you're an idiot or a clown or stupid because you <laughs> don't like none of the, I, I'm not going to judge people that way. We all have our opinions, and there's four, if not more, quality options at number five for the Pistons. Yes, I 100% agree. And like, like I said, I know that you, you you do your homework on all this stuff like that, and that's why like I wanted to reach out to you specifically to get your take on this because I guess for me, if I were to start it out, the reason why I, I don't think it is a fit, and, it, and it's a, it'll be a fit in terms of like they'll go to the playoffs, right? They'll, they'll win games, but I think at a championship level. Of like winning like a, like a, a championship and competing. Like I'm looking at the teams in the conference finals right now, and obviously I don't think you know Jaden Ivey shares the traits of, of you know shooting guards or wings and on those teams. And even just to the point of like, well, some of them, I guess Jalen Brunson maybe, but shooting the three consistently is the biggest thing for me. And the other thing I wanted to say too, when I think of a three level scoring facilitator like Cade Cunningham and a slashing guard who who kind of struggled shooting, the only pairing. Of, of those two, in my mind, and you, and, and you could help me if, if you can, that, you know, that won a championship was LeBron James and Dwayne Wade, which I spoke on the podcast uh, today, actually. But I feel like even they kind of, like, underfulfilled what they were supposed to be, the talent levels they did. And I feel like pairing those two, we'd be asking them to, you know, overcome the same stuff they did, and that's LeBron freaking James and Dwayne Wade. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just, I just don't see it as a fit, again, at, at a championship level. I, st- I like so Ivy. I, would... I think he'd be better as the guy, though, if that makes sense. Okay, and I think that's where I probably disagree a little bit easy is I don't trust Jaden Ivey's decision-making and stuff enough for him to be the guy. I don't know that you do want the ball in his hands all that much. So I actually think it's even better for him to come to Detroit and play with Cade Cunningham and play off the ball. But you're exactly right. The shooting has to be better. If the catch-and-shot shoot, catch-and-shoot shooting – um, doesn't get better, then yeah, you're right. It's not going to be a championship level backcourt. If the defense doesn't get better, easy and spend, it's not going to be a championship level backcourt. But that's what we do with all these guys we project. Is he the absolute best quote unquote fit? No, I think my guy Benedict Matherin is actually the best fit of all these guys. All I'm saying is I do think it can work. Yeah, I for me, it's I see for the most comparison of the players left in the conference championship games, I think he's the most comparable to Jalen Brown, just in the fact that Jalen Brown still doesn't have that consistent knockdown three pointer. Like he can hit the three, he can shoot the three. And when he's hot, he's hot. We saw he went, you know, a hundred percent from two point, uh, two point land a couple games ago and scored 40 points. It was this crazy performance, but he still is more of a slasher. And if, if Jalen, Jaden Ivy can get to that level, that would be a great compliment. That would be a great piece to put around Cade where he can play. I don't think he can play defense like Jaden Brown and his shot needs to get to that level to where he's reliable, at least from the outside. Like you said, the catch and shoot factor is huge to me because that's where you have these guys, you have Cade Cunningham, you have Killian Hayes, you're going to bring in somebody else potentially in the post you have Marvin Bagley these guys that are going to attract defense and you need to kick it out and for guys that are going to be sitting there waiting for the ball ready to catch and shoot 
I talked about it on our podcast last time is that Jaden Ivy, he doesn't strike the fear into the defenders to where they have to stay attached to him on the outside like that. Like a guy like Benedict, Benedict Matherin or, or a Keegan Murray that you know that when they're out there, if they're open, they're going to knock the, knock the shot down. And that is so important for not only today's basketball, but for the Pistons, because we were so lacking in the three point shot last year that I think bringing in a guy like that, who needs to build, he needs that's, Probably the two most, the biggest factors that he needs to improve on is three-point shot making and defense, and that's what we are lacking the most on last year. I just don't, I don't like bringing that into the situation. Uh, I'll, like I said, he's not a bad player. I like him as a player. I watched a lot of Big Time basketball last year, so I saw him a lot, and um, I think he could play with Cade because there still is a lot of off ball. Cade plays a lot off the ball. He did a lot last year, and he's comfortable doing that. But I just think we need to get a player whose strengths fill our needs, which are defense and three-point shooting. Yeah, I don't disagree with any of that. If I wanted to push back, like continue to push the Jaden Ivey, you know, train, I think he can attack closeouts though. So I think he shoots it well enough that when he's off ball, K drives in, he attracts these defenders, you kick it out to Ivy, you better close out because he will make catch and shoot threes, I think. And then when you close out, now he can attack an unsettled defense, a defender that's closing out to him. So I do think, again, playing off ball, which he did a lot at Purdue. That's yes. one thing in my film study that I found more and more. He played off ball quite a bit. Now, there are some questions, and this just came up. I recorded with me and Omari, recorded with Richard Stamen at Mavs Draft for the Pistons Pulse this week. There are some questions on, does Jaden Ivey want to do that? So that's one question I would ask if I was Troy Weaver. Are you willing to play off ball? How much do you want the ball in your hands in the NBA? Because, you know, we always say, oh, he can play off ball, but what if he doesn't want to? And, and when you say off ball, like, are you talking about, like, obviously once in a while he'll come off the screen and, and attempt, like, the catch and shoot. But, I'm like, when I see him, and I, the stuff that I watch this morning, there's a lot of, like, I guess dumping it to him and then he him taking a guy off the dribble, you know? Or I would say whenever I say off ball, I just mean he's not coming down and getting the initial action. So mm -hmm. my, here's my envision is Cade Cunningham downs and he gets the ball screen, the initial action, let's say with, with Marvin Bagley the third, and they run a screen and roll and it's not there. And now you have a weak side action of maybe Jaden Ivey's coming off a pin down. The initial action wasn't there. He kicks it to Ivy. He gets a ball screen from a, you know, I don't know, Jeremy Grant's still on the team, let's say. Jeremy Grant sets a ball screen, and now he's do attacking off of that. So, I mean, it, it doesn't always have to work that way. I just think Ivy can do that. If you watch, he was running off staggered screens on the baseline all the oh, time. Oh, that at for Purdue. sure, yeah. Yeah, and that that's another factor. That's I like that offense a lot, like that Golden State Warriors offense that we saw in the Pistons with Rip Hamilton. You see it with other players like CJ McCollum and stuff like that where they're just running without the ball. They're running around the floor, and they're taking these back screens. They're taking off of these guys, and when you have these big bodies that I want us to sign Mitchell Robinson, and so if you bring in a Mitchell Robinson, you have him, you have Beef Stew, you have Marvin Bagley, you have – Potentially, if we trade Jeremy Grant, another big guy in a Keegan Murray or a Duran, or you have Jeremy Grant that can make a screen down there and get a guard open to have him sprint around the floor, get all the way to the other catch, boom, right there with it, you know, and I, I don't know. I, I think he can mold into that, but I definitely feel like he's more comfortable shooting off of the dribble or, or like you said, initiating the offense and like like you said, it's it's different because Cade can do that as well. Cade can play off ball. He's we saw he was comfortable doing that with the Corey Joseph show, which uh, don't even get me started on that. But but I I don't know. I just, I just feel like Shaden Sharp, from what I saw from him, he is a better shooter in my eyes. I, obviously, we didn't see yeah, that at a collegiate so. level, so it, it's different to that point, but when I see his jump shot, when I see the confidence he has in it, where he pulls up from, the different type of shot making that he possesses, it, 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 it gets me more excited for the potential of what he can be, definitely. And I think a lot of people, if we shift to Shaden Sharp, is, you know, have made the argument, it's the Pistons need to swing for the fence. I think Shaden Sharp is, it's so hard. He is absolutely a wild card. I've felt comfortable taking him some mock drafts. And then sometimes I'm like, I, I don't know. I don't know what to think about him. <laughs> he does fit a really good archetype next to Cade Cunningham as well. Again, and I know we'll talk about him eventually. Easy Benedict Matherin is the best archetype. 
but Cade's so malleable. You can find different guys. You know, so many guys fit next to him. But I think there's an argument to made that you put a bucket getter like Shaden Sharp, who doesn't necessarily need the ball in his hands, creating with the ball in his hands all the time. I think that's a really good fit next to Cade Cunningham as well. Mm -hmm. Shaden Sharp's defense is completely unknown as well. Like as much as I kind of you know critique Jaden Ivey, what do we know anything about Shaden Sharp on the defensive end of the right. floor? Yeah. Can I, can I ask one thing, too? Because you did say it mentions one thing that with the archetypes. And I'm just I, – I wouldn't I, – I want to make this clear, I guess, to, like, uh, our listeners and stuff like that, too, and whoever may, like, tune into the video. Make sure you guys hit the like button and make sure you check out Motor City Hoops as well. But um, the archetype of Jaden Ivey in a Cade Cunningham, is there an example of it now in the NBA? Or I guess not now – both now in the NBA and also, like, at a championship pedigree that you could, like – I guess help me feel comfortable with because I don't I don't hate the idea of Jaden Ivey. He's just not my number one option or two. No, and this was this was kind of the your tweet or the the original video, right? This is where it came. That was your original point, correct? Was like we haven't. Your worry is we haven't seen the ball dominant big quote unquote guard, whatever you want to classify Kate as, with the explosive athletic also maybe ball dominant guard in Jaden Ivey. That's kind of your worry, correct, Easy? Yeah, yeah. The 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 three level scoring facilitator. And then the I'd say that slashing guard with you know kind of inconsistent in shooting. No, I can't think of one off the top of my head. So I, I don't have like a rebuttal to that. Um, it, it will be interesting. I may have to tweet this out and see if I can get some of the same, the same, some of the same feedback that you got. <laughs> but I, I, I cannot think. You brought up the one with LeBron and Dwayne Wade. Obviously, anytime you're using LeBron James an example, there should yeah. be an asterisk because that dude is just unreal. We're not necessarily seeing that with Giannis, right? Like I don't think Middleton or Drew Holiday fit yeah. that archetype. Luca doesn't have that type of player in Dallas. Jalen Brunson is not the same type of archetype as what Jaden Ivey is. So, I mean, I guess to your point is I can't think of one off the top of my head, no. Yeah, and, and, I, and I'm not, like, using it as, like, oh, like, oh I'm winning the debate. It's just that's where I struggle, right? It's like, I, I, like when I want to build this team, I'm not the GM, you know what I'm saying? But, like, I like to, I like to see, you know, I guess it's, it's, just map it out and see how like, equi make a championship team or something like that. Or even, like, something like now, the four teams in the conference finals. Like, just something similar to that, you know what I'm saying? That, and that's why, like, I struggle with it. That, that's what makes me worried, you and, know what I'm saying? And when I think about it and I, like, dive really deep into it, obviously we have, you already said, the LeBron James and Dwayne Wade comparison. To a similar degree, you have Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen. To, but that's, like... Like that's that's fucking Michael Jordan. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, you know, like, that's Michael Jordan. That's LeBron James. You can't hope somebody's gonna be that. And and even like like a Paul Pierce, Rajon Rondo, you know, situation. But, but at that Paul point, Pierce Paul Pierce, down. Rajon Rondo, you have Kevin Garnett, you have Ray Allen, you have these other pieces that that it, it's not solely on the backs of these guys. And and Paul Pierce is different. Paul Pierce isn't gonna you know. He's not going to run your offense. He's he's the guy yeah. that he's the guy that's going to get you buckets. He's the guy. But Rondo is the is the playmaker. Rondo is is the is the is the point guard that drives the ship. Yeah. And so yeah, it's hard to think about because when we think about you know maybe James Harden and, and Russell Westbrook, we see how that didn't work out. You know James Harden and Chris Paul, obviously both of those guys can make shots that, at a certain level. Yes, yeah, so that's a shot making. And, shot and is it's different because Chris Paul is more of the point guard, and and, and uh, James Harden is is his own thing. We only James Harden's an enigma at this point because he had the three Enig years what where, no, I'm I'm <laughs> where he had the three years where he was the best offensive player in the history of basketball, and then they changed the rule, and now he's averaging twenty points a game. So it, it, it's tough to really nail down what that archetype would be, who would be comparable to that that backcourt pairing, because even you look at it now with the backcourts out there now, where you have Desmond Bain and and John Morant. And mm -hmm. even at that point, John Morant is more of the Jaden Ivey, but he's in the lead. And you have Desmond Bain, who's the knockdown shooter, yes. defender. And then you have the same thing with Steph Curry and Klay Thompson, where Steph Curry is the lead, and he's the best shooter of all time. And you have Klay Thompson, who's the standstill also shooter shoot the and defender. Ball, yeah. And then you have Darius Garland and Colin Sexton. Is that kind of more comparable to a Jaden Ivey, Kate Cunningham? What is that uh, championship not, yeah. level? You Colin Sexton's not as big. Maybe he's not as as skilled as Cade Cunningham. But And the, again, yeah, that's not a championship pedigree backcourt. Yeah. So That's where I struggle, man. And like, to, I, I don't know if I said this in a pod and, and, and like 
maybe it's a little bit of a flex. Maybe it is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But no, it's just like Jalen Rose, the one who brought this up to me and kind of like changed my philosophy on basketball a little bit. And he was like, uh, you take away all skill and basketball is a big man's game. Right, because we were talking about with him more specifically. We were having a discussion about John Morant or Zion Williamson. He was talking about give me, give me Zion. Like, look at the the NBA championships throughout the history of time. When it, when it was dinosaur age, it was the big men that dominated the game. Now that this floor is you know, no more hand checking. You're spacing the floor a little bit more. You're starting to see the wings. You know what I'm saying the Kawhi Leonard's, LeBron James, KD. You know, I mean, even you, yeah, you can point to like the Warriors. But even then, they had Draymond and, and, and at the time, Harrison they have, Barnes. And now and, they have a platoon of wings. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and Iguodala, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so it's like, for me, I, I want 6-6 six, six and up, man. And, and for, for Shade and Sharp, the reason why I would shade towards him, no pun intended, nice. is like he's got that 6-5 frame, 7-foot wingspan, and the kid's still only 18. So he may, he may grow some, you know what I'm saying? I almost look at him. I could be way wrong. Again, it's so hard to evaluate this guy because it's hard. It's hard. But I almost feel like a B.I. with some bouncing up to him a little bit there if he grows, grows a little bit more. Those long-ass arms look crazy. And, again, he might get taller. Yeah.